Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be doing a deep dive into e.l.f. Cosmetics, talking about all of the products that I own from e.l.f., what my favorites are, products that didn't really work out for me, and I also did my makeup today using all e.l.f. Cosmetics. We had a little bit of fun mixing a lot of products today on my face, and I think that the look came out really beautiful and I'm really loving it. Before we start into today's video though, I am going to show you guys my new pieces from Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is sponsoring today's video, so huge thank you for that. And this is actually the last campaign that I'm going to be doing with Ana Luisa this year. So thank you so much to Ana Luisa for working with me over these past few months. I've really enjoyed working with the brand. They are such a nice brand to work for. And also the fact that I've been able to get these beautiful, beautiful pieces is just amazing. I love all of my pieces from Ana Luisa. So these earrings right here are the Emmy Mini Rouge earrings. They are so cute and they have such a beautiful, dainty little gem hanging from them. I also have that same exact style that I'm wearing right now, but this is the Champagne Stone. And these are just such cute little dainty huggy earrings and I love that style. I think that this is a great style to dress up and dress down. And then the third pair I got is actually a set. This is the Val set in the shade Rose. This set also comes in a beautiful marine shade and I think that this set would look so cute for anyone who had like three piercings going down their ear. When I picked out this style, I did not realize that it wasn't going to be three different sets of earrings and it was just like the one set with these three individual ones. And I do not have three piercings on my ear, but it's making me consider it because I used to have my second hole pierced and I pierced the third hole on my own. Like that is some middle school thing that you did in middle school. But like obviously I did not do a good job and like it did not stay and I didn't like wear an earring permanently in there. But I think that if you had all three holes pierced, this would be such a cute set to wear. Ana Luisa is a super sustainable, high quality jewelry brand. They use a lot of recycled gold in their jewelry. It's also such high quality. This is the Anna necklace and it's just such a staple. Again, they are doing a 10% off sale on their website right now. So definitely go ahead and check out the Ana Luisa jewelry pieces and if you are going to shop on their site please use my personalized link down below it really helps me out again thank you so much Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video I've really enjoyed working with you these past few months I'm sad that our partnership is coming to an end but I really appreciate being able to work with such an amazing company these past few months but I'm ready to get into this whole elf cosmetics video diving into the brand doing my makeup let's get into it i'll be starting out with primer today i have the elf jelly pop dew primer i just have a small size of this and i've had this for a while so that kind of shows you that i don't reach for it too often other than creating a sort of tacky base which is kind of nice for like makeup to adhere to but I don't ever find it making my makeup last any longer than usual. I think that this is a really nice alternative to like more silicone primers and it does make my skin feel pretty nice and hydrated. It also has a really nice glowy look to the skin. So it is a pretty nice base for my makeup, but that is my skin with the Jelly Pop Dew Primer all over. I think that it looks really beautiful and very healthy looking. I have two foundation type products from e.l.f. The first one is the e.l.f. Flawless Satin Foundation. I have mine in the shade Almond. I find that Almond matches me pretty well. It is a hair light on me but I think I'm gonna mix my foundation today. But the other foundation that I have from e.l.f. is the Camo CC Cream. It has a broad spectrum SPF of 30, which I think is really nice. You can definitely tell that they were going in the It Cosmetic CC Cream route. The It Cosmetic CC Cream does have an SPF of 50 though, but I think that the SPF of 30 is really nice in this. It also has collagen, peptides, niacinamide. The difference obviously is that the It Cosmetic CC Cream is $40 and the e.l.f. CC Cream is $14. I will say though, I struggle to find a good shade in the e.l.f. CC Cream. I am a true medium or medium tan, depending on the time of year, in the It Cosmetic CC Cream. 
And the shades that I have in the e.l.f. CC cream are medium 330W and then I have medium 375N. I think that by mixing these two shades together, I can get a pretty close shade match, but the medium 375N is a bit too deep and pretty cool toned on me. And then the medium 330W is so yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch them both. That is the Flawless Finish Foundation in Almond. And then right next to it is 375N in the CC Cream. And then all the way over here is 330W in the CC Cream. So those are all the shades swatched out. Looking at the 330W on its own, honestly doesn't look like it would be such a terrible shade match, but it does end up really looking quite yellow all over the skin on me. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to mix together the Flawless Finish Foundation and the e.l.f. CC Cream in 330. So that is the shade that I came up with by mixing those two colors together. I think that's gonna look really nice on the skin. To apply my foundation, I'm using the Avocado Sponge from e.l.f. that came out with their Chipotle collection. I really like that collection. I kind of wish that they came out with it a second time, like after they sold out of it. It was such a good collection. I used to work at Chipotle, and when e.l.f. came out with this collection like a few months ago, I was like, okay, I have to have that. But I'm loving how this is looking on the skin. I feel like I'm getting the best of both worlds of like the natural finish of the e.l.f. CC Cream with the really nice medium coverage of the foundation. I think I'm gonna need some more though. I feel like the sponge kind of sucked up a lot of the product. The only issue that I have with the Flawless Finish Foundation is the smell of it. It smells a little floral powdery, and I really wish that brands would just, if you're gonna put a scent like that in the product, consider not doing any fragrance at all, please. I really dislike that. I don't think it's necessary. And then my only real issue with the CC Cream from e.l.f. is the shade range. I just don't think that they have a good shade match for me. And if that's the case, I know a lot of you watch my videos for shade references. And if like there's not a good shade match for me, there's probably not a good shade match for a lot of people. Also when worn on its own, I need to be super duper quick when blending out the CC cream. It will dry quickly. Sometimes I even prefer to go in with a brush because of that so that I can like just quickly blend it all over the skin. I think that if you had really dry skin you probably wouldn't like the CC cream because it does dry down super fast. It's pretty matte I'd say. It's like a natural matte I'm thinking but I think oily skin and dry skin alike would really enjoy the Flawless Finish Foundation from e.l.f. I have two different types of concealers from e.l.f. I have the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. I have mine in the shade medium beige. I don't think that this is a great shade on me. It is a little bit light. However, I don't really love this concealer. So trying to find my perfect shade in the concealer isn't like top on my priority list. I do have these two other concealers though. This is the e.l.f. Flawless Brightening Concealer. I have these two in the shade Medium 32N, so that one right there, and then the next one is Medium 33W. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these two concealers as well. There's going to be a lot of mixing in this video just because I have a lot of products from e.l.f. to talk about. I'm just gonna do like one, yeah, one thing there. I find this concealer to be pretty thick and not like the most blendable and then as it wears throughout the day I really don't like the way that my under eyes look which is so unfortunate. A lot of people love this concealer so much. I'm going in with the medium 33W now but I wanted to use this one because I find that the camo concealer I have is a little too, it's just a little bit too light. But I think that the mixture of these is going to be really nice and I think that the mixture of these is going to be really nice for the wear of the concealer because this one is a little bit more natural looking. It really doesn't have that much coverage, the Flawless Brightening Concealer, it really doesn't have that much coverage to it. It just kind of brightens up the area a little bit. I, I think it's a product that's much better for like a no makeup makeup kind of look 
but I actually really like how that concealer helped blend out. The e.l.f. Camo Concealer is just really thick. I think that throughout the day as it wears and it creases, it definitely gives the appearance of like a crumbly under eye, which I really dislike. So I hardly ever reach for this product. I am really liking how they are looking together though. Going to work on my brows now, I have the e.l.f. Brow Pencil in the shade Deep Brown, and then I also have the e.l.f. Wow Brow in the shade Deep Brown. I really like the Wow Brow from e.l.f., and then the Brow Pencil from e.l.f. I find to be also really nice. I think that the tip of it is really large, so if you have really thin brows that you need kind of more of a smaller brush for, or like a smaller brow tip for, you might not like this one. I do like how sort of waxy the product is, where like you need to add quite a bit of pressure to get some of the color to come out. I think that that makes for a really nice like controlled brow pencil. I think for this being like one of the cheapest brow pencils at the drugstore, I think that it really gets the job done. Yeah, that brow looks awesome. I also think that the shade match in my brows is really perfect, which is awesome to have at the drugstore because sometimes drugstore brow products are a little bit more red leaning and warm tone leaning, but this brow color is perfect. And that filled in my brows really quickly, really nicely, and I love how they look. The e.l.f. Wow Brow is their brow gel, and there are little tiny fibers throughout it, so it does a good job at like thickening up the brow. I also am no stranger to using the e.l.f. Wow Brow completely by itself, and I really like the look of that as well. I think that it does a pretty decent job filling in my brows and making it look like they are a little bit thicker than they actually are. It makes for a really nice, quick, natural looking brow, but I'm really just using this product to like sort of set my brows today since we went in with the brow pencil. I'm just taking whatever is left over on my sponge and I'm just patting it on my eyelid to kind of even out the tone of my eyelid, but also acting as a little bit of primer. I don't have an eye primer from e.l.f. I used to own like a little putty eye primer from e.l.f., but that dried up. I know that you guys are all probably super familiar with the e.l.f. bite-sized eyeshadow palettes. They are little eyeshadow quads for $3 at e.l.f. I have pumpkin pie, and then I have berry bad. I recently used berry bad in a fall makeup tutorial that I just did. Next is carnival candy. And then the last one is Cream and Sugar. Out of all of these eyeshadow palettes, there is not one where I would personally do like a full look from. I definitely would wear all of these shades and I could make a complete look with this palette, but I would be missing something. I'd be missing a little inner corner highlight or like a brow bone highlight or maybe a deeper shade for some wing liner. But I do have other eyeshadow type products from e.l.f. So the e.l.f. Liquid Metallic Eyeshadows are my favorite. I love these. I think that these are such an amazing product from e.l.f. They're only $5. I think that the glitter version of these are trash. Don't recommend them. Definitely recommend the Metallic Shimmer Eyeshadows. I have the shade Galaxy. So pretty a great one and done shade. I have also the shade Moon, beautiful shade all over the eyelid. And then last I have the shade Comet, another beautiful shade all over the eyelid. These are awesome. They also last a really long time on the eyes with and without primer. So highly recommend them. I cannot get enough. Really love them. I want more shades of these because they're so good. And then these are some products from e.l.f. that I really don't reach for too often. This is the e.l.f. Blushing Rose Eyeshadow. Just kind of looks like that. It's matte, like that. I probably would wear that pretty often. I think that that's a really nice shade. And I feel like a lot of people would really like this shade all over the eyelid and kind of blend it out in the crease. I think that that would be a really nice like everyday shade for a lot of people. I just don't grab it too often. Maybe I'll wear it today though. And then I have the No Budge Eyeshadow Sticks from e.l.f. I have Magnetic Pull, and then I also have Copper Chic. So that's Magnetic Pull and that's Copper Chic. 
And the shades that they came out with, that e.l.f. came out with in this line, I didn't think I really liked any of the shades too much. But yeah, these metallic shimmers from e.l.f., I love those. I'm actually taking a little bit of that blushing rose shade and I'm going to put it on my outer corner, kind of tucked into the crease a little bit as well. And I'm going to use a brush to blend it. Oh yeah, I can totally see people loving this color. This is such a nice natural like wash of color all over the eyelid. I really like that. I should be using that way more often. I'm going to layer this. Layering it up. That was gorgeous. It blended out so nicely all over the eye, even for it being liquid. I think that even an inexperienced eyeshadow wearer, as long as you have a nice big blending brush, I think that anyone could do that. And I honestly would put mascara on and call it a day. But I think that the liquid metallic eyeshadow in the shade Comet would look so pretty paired with this eyeshadow. So that's what I'm going to do. Going to apply... A bit of this all over the eyelid. Mmm, beautiful! And I'm taking a brush to blend this out. These are so pretty and reflective. They also really give that whole kind of wet eyelid look, but like without the mess and without the creasing. Wanted to add another little layer, especially to like the more inner corner of the eye. For like even more brightness and to carry that shade a little bit into the inner corner. I'm going to go into the Berry Bad palette and I love this shade over on the end, this like reddish purpley brown. I think that it would look so good with the eye shades that we have going on in the eyelid so I'm gonna take that and I'm taking it on a little pencil brush and I'm just running it along my lash line doing my favorite sort of like smoky liner look I'm lightly going to dip a small blending brush into that shade and I'm just going to go over the blend we just did but then also like lightly tuck that shade into the crease. That's all the eyeshadow that I'll be putting on my eyelids today. I love how this look came out. And I also really enjoy all of the products separately that I used for my eyes. I think that e.l.f. has a great range of different types of eyeshadows. So there is something for everyone, but personally, the little liquid metallic eyeshadows from e.l.f. are such a standout product. I really enjoyed how this product from e.l.f. went, the Little Blushing Rose Liquid Eyeshadow. And although I don't have a personal favorite of the e.l.f. Bite Size Eyeshadow palettes, that doesn't mean that other people wouldn't. And I definitely think that they're worth checking out, especially for that $3 price point. I don't have any eyeliner from e.l.f. I don't use eyeliner often at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and curl my lashes. For my mascara, I'm using the e.l.f. Big Mood Mascara. I did not think that e.l.f. would ever come out with a mascara that I actually liked. I've tried probably like three or four e.l.f. mascaras in my lifetime and none of them were good. I did not like any of them. The e.l.f. Big Mood mascara though is so good. I pretty much used this mascara all summer along with the Oma by Sharon C mascara. I've also been using the Rare Beauty Mascara pretty often recently, and the Kosas Mascara is also really good. But yeah, the e.l.f. Big Mood Mascara, it actually reminds me a lot of the Lancome Muncier Big, which is really nice because Lancome is not a cruelty-free brand, but e.l.f. is, and Lancome is also really expensive. Like, that mascara is $30. Where do people get off making a mascara for $30? I don't know. This mascara though is $7, so very much on the more affordable side. But does anyone remember when literally everything on Elf's website was $1? Like who remembers that? I remember when I was a kid, like young, maybe like fifth or sixth grade, and I discovered Elf, and I discovered the Elf website. 
my mom definitely had to make purchases for me. Like I would give her my babysitting money and just spend hours on the e.l.f. website picking out all my one dollar makeup. And then they had the e.l.f. studio line where like everything was three dollars so like also very cheap but like it was a little bit nicer like it was a, like the packaging was a little bit nicer the concealer is creasing really bad and it's looking so crusty like where it's creased it's fine when i blend it out with my sponge but like i don't have my sponge on me all day for me to be blending out my concealer all day I don't like the e.l.f. camo concealer and that's just that on that. Loving the eyeshadow, loving the mascara though. So I do have a variety of different types of cheek products from e.l.f. The real standout cheek products for me personally are the e.l.f. putty blushes and bronzers. I really like my e.l.f. putty bronzer in Bronze Belle. I do think though for the winter time I will probably be gravitating towards Golden Days. But yeah, these are just such good bronzers. I love how they look and blend on the skin. They look very natural and beautiful. I also really enjoy the putty blushes from e.l.f. My favorite one is in the shade Bali. I love this shade both on the cheeks and the lips, which is so nice. I love a good lip cheek blush. And then I also have some powder cheek products from e.l.f. I have the e.l.f. bronzer in Perpetually Tan. It's not the deepest bronzer, but the bronzer is really smooth. And honestly, it is showing up pretty nice on the skin. It's really smooth and really matte. So if you like that sort of thing, I think that you would like this bronzer. I'm going to use the Golden Days Putty Bronzer just because I think that it would match the Perpetually Tan side a bit more. I just want to use like two different bronzers on different sides so you guys can see but oh yeah golden days is so pretty it might be time for me to transition to golden days for this time of year because i'm just like not out in the sun as much as i was over the summer and i'm also using a favorite elf brush this is the elf airbrush precision brush this brush is so good for cream products and getting it all in the right places I wish I had another one strictly for blush, but I do have a e.l.f. blush brush that I use quite often. I think that it would just be up to you preference wise on whether you like a more cream bronzer or you like a more powder bronzer. In person, these definitely look very different. I feel like my face definitely looks more made up and glam on the side where I use the powder bronzer, but then my face looks way more natural and like dewy and fresh faced on the side that I use the putty bronzer. So I think that it definitely comes down to preference because I don't think that either side looks bad or like better than the other. I do think I prefer the putty bronzer, but that's like my personal preference. I have an e.l.f. highlighter. This is in the shade 24 karat gold and it's a little, it's like a little not smooth. I don't wanna say chunky, but it's like not very smooth going in with a super duper light hand. I think that there are better highlighters out there. I also personally prefer like a cream or liquid highlight. This is actually going on really nicely with a light hand, but yeah, I don't reach for this too often. I think that if you are like kind of wanting a highlight, I think that you would probably enjoy this one, but I think that there are like probably other highlighters that you could go for and still be happy with. And then I have one powder blush from e.l.f. This is the Glowy Rose shade, and this is like their shimmer blush formula. I don't want to put this on my face right now because it is like a shimmery blush. I think that it will highlight texture, but that is what that blush looks like. Ooh, it's very pretty. That is so pretty. If that is something that you are into, like a real shimmery blush like that, I would probably pick that up. But for my blush today, I am going in with Bali. I love Bali so much. It looks so beautiful on the skin. It looks really pretty on the lips as well. If you have a similar complexion to mine, I think that you would be drooling over Bali. It's so nice. And I'm going in with the e.l.f. Putty Blush Brush today to apply it. The thing that I love about these blushes from e.l.f. is the finish of them is so pretty. It is like a cream blush, but there's something about the finish of it being like a soft matte 
that really makes my skin look kind of flawless. I really enjoy it. And then the shade is perfect. It really has that like soft matte powdery blush look, but in a cream. So it looks really natural and it blends really nicely. I'm using the e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder today and I have mine in the shade medium. I think that this is a really pretty powder. It has like the tiniest amount of sheen to it but I think that that makes it really pretty and like glowy looking. It's very nice for like under the eyes. Why is it that companies charge so much for makeup when you can literally get a look like this from e.l.f.? What, what sense does that make? What sense does that make for real? So I have a couple of different lip options from e.l.f. I have the e.l.f. lip lacquer in the shade Moody. Love this, love this gloss. I think that this is such a cute gloss. I know that I've influenced a lot of you guys to go out and buy this gloss and it is just so, so pretty. The next is the e.l.f. Ride or Die Lip Balm in Cheeky Cherry. My favorite one is in Tough Cookie and I don't know where that is. It is a pinky brown nude and I highly recommend it. It smells delicious. It, it's the best smelling one. The Cheeky Cherry one smells like artificial cherry. The Tough Cookie one smells like vanilla cookies. It's it's very good. I really recommend it. I also have the Hydrating Core Lip Shine in Blissful. I'm going to apply a little bit of it right now. I think that this one's a little too light. Yeah, it's pretty nude on me, which it's cute. That's definitely cute. Whenever like I wear something like this without makeup, I'm not looking too cute. And then I do have a lipstick from them. This is in the shade Nectar. I'm gonna apply a little bit of this. We'll do some layering. I think that this lipstick is nice. It is like a cheap lipstick though. Like the packaging is super cheap, but that is cute. And let's layer some Moody on top. So the combination of those went super peachy, but I'm not mad at it. I think that it looks great with the cheeks and the eyes. I'm going to go in with this e.l.f. Dewy Setting Mist. This is old. This is so old. I probably should not be spraying this on my face. I don't have a newer one though. Like I don't have a newer e.l.f. setting spray. I did have like their version of the all nighter spray and I did not like it. I did not think that it was good. It was not comparable to my Urban Decay. I also have these little cheek duos from e.l.f. These are kind of like the cheek version of their bite-sized eyeshadows. Also $3, but I don't really like these very much. I don't think that these are high quality. I think that the highlighters in them go on very chalky and chunky. And then the blush shades and like this bronzer shade, they go on really patchy. I don't really enjoy these very much and I don't reach for them. So this is the completed look using all e.l.f. cosmetics. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful and that me going into sort of like a deep dive into like all of the e.l.f. products that I own was helpful seeing them swatched and seeing how they perform on my face and on my skin. I really hope that it was helpful for you guys. I love e.l.f. cosmetics. I think that they are such an amazing drugstore brand. They are cruelty free, affordable. They claim to try and put good ingredients into their products. I just think that they're a great accessible brand for all ages, all skin types, all skin tones. Again, thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. I really hope you guys check them out and that you guys pick out some cute earrings. These ones, I can't get over how cute they are. The little Emmy style, if you had forgotten and you wanted to pick up a pair of these, I just think that these are so cute and dainty, perfect for like any occasion and also remember that they are doing that 10% off sale so you will get any piece that you pick out on their site for 10% off but that is going to be it for me today thank you guys so much for watching today's video really hope that you guys enjoyed and really hope that you guys found it helpful if you aren't already subscribed definitely go ahead and do so and hopefully I will see you next time